Welcome to Elevate, the podcast where we dissect exceptional achievers who are consistently raising the bar personally and professionally to produce extraordinary results in investment real estate and ultimately in their lives. Now, here's your host, Tyler Chesser. Elevate Nation, welcome back. This is Tyler Chesser. I'm so thankful to have you here. And I'm blessed and grateful to be on a new platform, a kind of new special edition of Elevate Podcast today with two guests. And I want to welcome Ashley Kerr and Felipe Mejia. Welcome. Thank you for having us, Tyler. Hey, what's up, man? Yeah, it's, it's, it's awesome to be on here today, man. Yeah, no, it's a lot of fun. And uh, like I said, you guys are going to have to lead the way in some ways here because you guys are the tag team podcasters and uh you know this is certainly a new approach for us today but looking forward to having a mastermind with you guys today and talking about a lot of uh, personal growth real estate investing and beyond so we can make sure that we serve the audience and elevate to a life without limits and so with that said i want to ask elevate nation are you ready to take it to another level because that's absolutely what we're going to be doing today and i want to welcome you back because our show's mission is to identify and apply how the best of the best raise the bar personally and professionally to achieve greatness in real estate and beyond and we're going to talk habits we're going to talk routines we're going to talk systems tools strategies and so much more from two individuals who are certainly building a life that they can elevate to a life without limits and you know they're doing so much exciting things and, and i want to remind you this is a master class for leaders and those looking to achieve uncommon results through real estate investing and ultimately in their lives. And if you appreciate what we're doing, we'd appreciate if you subscribe to the show, if you gave us a rating, certainly a five-star rating if you're so inclined, and a review. Let us know what sort of feedback are you getting? What sort of things are you applying to your own life? What massive action have you taken yourselves? And so with that said, I want to go ahead and introduce to you our co-hosts of the Bigger Pockets Real Estate Rookies podcast, which is Felipe and Ashley. And Felipe is a buy and hold investor in Nashville. And Ashley is in Buffalo and we are focusing, they are focusing on helping people take action and get started in real estate. So with that said, guys, tell us a little bit more about you as people. Who are you all behind the bio? For sure. Ashley, you want to go first? Sure. Yeah, I will. Um, so I live on a dairy farm in uh, Buffalo, New York with my husband and our three little boys. And I started real estate investing about five years ago. Uh, I worked as an accountant for about six months out of college, hated it and quit my job and started managing an apartment complex. And uh, two years after that, I bought my first property. So I mainly focus on duplexes. Um, I have a, a triplex, a quadplex and a single family home in one six unit. And then the rest duplexes. Um, I've grown my portfolio to 32 units, um, sold some along the way and bought different ones. Uh, but other than that, um, I haven't really done, I've done one wholesale deal, haven't done any flipping, but right now my current goal is to start investing out of state. So I'm trying to focus on one market right now and hopefully uh, by summer make uh, an out of state purchase. Love that's it. amazing. Yeah, that's was really cool, Ashley. I I always wonder, do you like how to measure my my units that I have or or whatever the case may be? Tyler, you went blurry there. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> um, for me, so my name is Felipe Mejia. I am co-host to Ashley Care on um, the on the Bigger Pockets Real Estate Rookie Show, man. And I got started in real estate, uh, same thing, like five years ago. Um, I graduated college, and I was all gun ho that I was going to be a police officer. Like that was my lifelong goal. I even got through college in three years to get done quickly, to get into the academy. I mean, I, I couldn't wait. That was my dream. Uh, it, it, you know, it, it, here in Nashville, Tennessee, where I grew up, um, and then three days into the academy, the training officer said, Felipe, uh, and this is quote, unquote, oh, we have enough Latino police officers. You are welcome to go. And wow. I thought it was just part of the banter. I, was, I thought it was just part of, of it. And I was like, oh, I love it. Like, I'm probably going to get that on the street anyways, but I'm, I'm raised in the South. I'm Hispanic. Like, I get it. I can take it. No big deal. And then I came back and he actually was like, dude, no, like you can't be on these grounds anymore. Like this isn't, he was serious. Um, and that like really broke me. And I was like seeking for my next purpose or whatever. Cause I thought that was going to be it for me. I was like, dang it. Like that's all I had ever really planned for. I didn't really have anything else, which, you know, um, is kind of, it also goes back to real estate. You always have got to have an exit strategy or, or, or some other way. But anyways, after that, man, um, I found real estate and then, uh, you know, ever since then I've been investing. Um, and I just thank God for that because it gave me another purpose, right? Something that I can look forward to and race, ethnicity, 
not even money, nothing, nothing can hold you back from investing. Um, and it, it doesn't matter who you are, you can do it. Um, and then for me now I have seven homes, um, but I treat each individual home as inside. I, I rent by the room. So I have typically four to six rooms, four upstairs, two downstairs. So I'm like, if I'm going units, I have like 42 or whatever, but single family homes, I have seven. What I do is I create the downstairs basement into another living space and then the two car garage into another living space. So I essentially have a triplex within a single family home. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, you really understand what I'm talking about. But I, cre I, I, I mean, wall to wall, I create as much value as I can per my properties. Not one square inch of my house doesn't get used. Um, so, so yeah, man, that, I just had to get really creative on how I invest in real estate. Um, I'll give you the backstory on that real quick. Um, when I was 12, my parents got divorced. In the Latino community, typically the, 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 the male is the one that brings in the money, the, the, you know, the, the, the mom, the wife, whatever, stays home, cooks clean, raises kids, which is it, it, now I'm finding out is even still a really hard job. We have a little one. Um, but my parents got divorced when I was really young. And when they did, the money went with my dad. Right. So like we were kind of like, oh, my gosh, like, you know, how are we going to do this? And my mom, she's a hustler. What she did was she has one of these homes that I now buy. All, all seven of mine are the same way. Um, we had a basement with a two car garage that she converted into rooms with the last like ten thousand dollars that she had. She just converted these into like small bedrooms, uh, 10 by 12s and just rented them out. Um, and then that's how we were able to stay above water. Um, so wow. that's kind of why that's kind of how and that's kind of what I do now all in, 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 a, in a paragraph, if you will. <laughs> No, I was awesome. lucky enough to go visit Felipe uh, before the coronavirus, and I got to see one of his properties that he was in the middle of transforming the basement into a unit, and it was really cool to see him. I got to meet a couple of his contractors, and then we went to um, drove by a couple of his other properties, and we looked at one that he had put an offer in, and it was really cool to see how he would get, do the layout, like rearrange it, and that one you could have done three units in because it had that that big basement, right? Yeah, exactly. So yeah. I'd love to meet whoever did these, but basically what it was is that you got a three bedroom, one bath upstairs. And then the downstairs, you have a huge 15 by 20 loft. And then you have another like 20 by 20 two car garage or something. It's huge. Um, and I'm like, who needs two car garage, a loft and one bathroom? Like it's just, it's, it's, it's not a useful house, I think, unless you're going to do what I do. And I just, I mean, I blow it out, add tons of bedrooms, bathrooms, kitchens. It's great. So yeah, so they all have the walkout basement, which makes yep. it seem like you're not living in a basement. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it's a, it's a walkout basement. You got a, a regular size door and windows and all that. It's fun. Yeah, I definitely want to dive back into some of the sort of the, you know, the pivots that both of you all made in your life. But before I do that, I want to serve the listeners real quick on your unique strategy there. Just curious as to how the numbers work. I mean, how does, a, you know, how does one of the single family home uh, numbers work in terms of the per room basis and so on and so forth? Yeah, man, let's chop it up. So I buy a house. My, my bread and butter is 190 to 220, 230 on the top end. Um, then I go, so if you're following the numbers, I'll just speak them out. You guys, your, your listeners can rewind and listen a little bit. Um, then what I do is uh, I, when I do a visual walkthrough, I know what inspection is going to look at as well. And um, I do a little bit different and Ashley will kind of explain how she does it. But what I, what I do is I hire an inspector to go in and inspect the property, knowing I'm going to get five to $10,000 off per inspection because of his report. His report is really strong versus just me saying like, Hey, I want $5,000 off. If I got a report that cost me 200 bucks. Hey, this stuff needs to get fixed, right? They're willing to take money off and um, because they see how much it's going to cost to get that stuff fixed. So I buy a property. I'm okay with going 10,000, maybe a little bit more over asking as long as I know that I'm going to get that off of inspection. And if I can get it under, I know I'm still going to get more money under inspection or after inspection to go down anyway. So 190 to 220 is my bread and butter. Um, I usually put 20% down, 30, 40,000, depending on where I purchased it at. Then I add about uh, 15 to $20,000 in the downstairs to add the bedrooms, bathrooms, and kitchens. I already know the electricians, the plumbers, the drywall guys, the handymen. Um, and the way I'm able to do that, a lot of people are probably going to be like, whoa, how does he do that so cheap? Like some of the things that I do is I make sure that they're only doing work. And when I, when I mean that is I buy all material. Um, I haul away all trash. Uh, I'm there. Um, I, I do a lot of the things that would also take up their time. Like if it's a drywall guy, he's going to be doing drywall. And like, that's it. He's not going to be picking up trash. He's not going to be dusting. He's, he's going to be doing drywall, very specific. Um, 
And then from there, once all the rooms are built, it's typically going to be the loft is going to be right at about uh, $650 to $700. The two car garage area becomes a two bedroom, one bath, one kitchen. That goes for about $900. And then upstairs is $500 a room. So $1,500 upstairs pays for my mortgage, my insurance, everything. And the downstairs is complete cash flow. I typically about $1,500 in cash flow per property that I get. If I have a partner, we split it. Um, yep. No, I love it. I just think it's such a great thing to highlight in the fact that you can be creative in real estate. It doesn't have to be the same strategy that you read in every single book or you hear on every single podcast. There's so many different ways to get creative in real estate and create that life that you want. And really kind of goes back to what both of you all said is that there was moments in your life where you were kind of you know, maybe pushed back in certain ways. Like, you know, Ashley, you were talking about how you had the accounting job and it was like, man, this is, this is rough. This isn't the yeah. life that I want. <laughs> and then Felipe, I mean, what a, what a comment in terms of, yeah, we've, we've had enough, you know, Latino police officers. I mean, that's an amazing, like crazy. I can't imagine how that would feel as a person, but then also I relate it to this kind of environment that we're in right now. Every single person on the planet earth is, has a pattern interrupt in their life and it's telling them, Hey, is what you're doing working right now? Or is this future path, you know, a path that makes sense for you? And so how are you going to be resourceful? How are you going to respond? Are you just going to say, hey, I'm the victim? Or are you going to take it in your own hands and say, hey, real estate is a different avenue for me. So I'd love if you could just talk, maybe both of you talk a little bit more about, you know, that moment a little bit deeper in terms of how that felt. And then what was your initial response? Were you just this empowered individual automatically or did you go through a little bit of a challenge before you got there yeah i'll let well, ashley Felipe, take that first or yeah well, go ahead. i i think would be a good thing to bring up is your post that you posted on instagram that got some controversy <laughs> because i, I think that. that would have to really relate to this so what what was the post again so i posted on instagram yesterday and my instagram is felipe mejia rei um and that'll be in the show notes i think but Absolutely. basically thanks thanks absolutely oh so I posted a, a post yesterday or the day, I think it was yesterday. And it said, you know, if you did, if you wasted this quarantine time, if you, if you watched Netflix versus reading a book, if you, if you didn't listen to a podcast, if you didn't come out with a side hustle, if you didn't innovate while quarantined, you, you, you don't have a lack of time. You have a lack of discipline. And it was like, I get typically a hundred, 200 likes on my stuff. This one got like 3000 and like 200 comments. Whoa. And not all of them were good, you can imagine. Um, some of the things were like, well, I'm a single mom with, with someone at home and I can't do this, okay? There was another one that was like, oh, well, shove it, Felipe, because you have all the money and you can do this, okay? <laughs> like, there was a lot of these negativities and I was really surprised because I'm like, um, I, I grew up when, I was, when, we, when we first came to the United States in a car. Like, we lived in a car for a couple years. Like, Trust me, I, I, I know the struggle, dude. Like, I didn't grow up with money. I didn't grow up with a silver spoon. I, and and if, if it almost hurt, I was like, man, people really don't know my story. I need to get out there and, and, and explain more. Like, no, I, I didn't. My mom didn't know English when she came to this country. And she, to this day, cleans houses. I mean, now she's got like a huge company. But, you know, it's like, no, like, trust me, I get the struggle. But well, if you I noticed- listen to the radio today you wasted your time because you could have been on a podcast. If you watched 30 minutes of TV, you wasted your time because you could have been doing something or reading a book. Like there's just, I just don't, it's, it's hard for me as a Hispanic being raised in the South, coming from a single mom to say, you don't have the time to do something. It's just really hard for me to accept that. I mean, well, I know some of the comments there. said yeah. about um, how like uh, people lost their jobs or going through a hard time, relax, leave them alone, let them just sit home or whatever. But you are an example of when something bad happens to you, instead of just, you know, doing nothing, you over, you overachieved that you got over it. You worked hard. You found how to make sure something like that didn't happen again. And that's very common with a lot of people we've talked to on our podcast about the last recession. They might've had struggled through that, but they took that time to learn and to put systems in place so that they did not struggle if that happens again. And I think that was like the more your post wasn't directed at everybody but it's for people that have the mindset that they want to grow and learn 
and use this time effectively. And I, I think it's a great example because yes, some people have kids and don't have the time, but what your post was saying that if you do have the time, you, you know, discipline yourself and try and learn a new skill or, you know, read a book or, you know, start a new business. <laughs> it's no but surprise I, why I, Ashley's successful. I mean, she's got three kids, a husband, she lives, she's humble and I'll, she, she's got a beautiful home. She's got tons of land. She's got a lot of work on her hands and she's still investing in real estate. Like Jesus, like, how are you a good wife, a good mom? Like you're crushing it in real estate. You're hosting a podcast. Like there's no, yeah, I mean, Felipe is really hyping me up. But when I did a, a call with him the other night, my husband was cooking lasagna while <laughs> we chatted. So he really I was. can't take all the credit. <laughs> all right. Your husband helps cook in the lasagna. Was it good? Yeah, it was. Yeah. Looked good. Yeah. I mean, it's just so important because it's a reminder of that. All right. The circumstances in our life can either cause us to be a victim or we can say, Hey, what, what can I do with these circumstances? What, mm -hmm. what is my opportunity now and what can I create? And so, I mean, was it the same thought process for you as well, Ashley, or, um, you know, did you kind of go through a little bit of a time period of, you know what, wow, I'm, I'm a victim and I can't believe I'm an accountant. You know, this is brutal. Did it take some time to get over the hump there or what was? Well, what was my problem? solution to getting out of that job was I, my, I told my husband, I said, I wanted to quit. I just want to quit. And he said, okay, if you become, if you get pregnant, you can quit and be a stay at home mom. So I got pregnant. <laughs> and that was like my plan. That was like, what a way out. that's my wow. way off is sitting at this desk, you know, and I quit during the middle of tax season, which was horrible for the people I worked with. Yes, I know. But that's how much I hated it. I couldn't even stay on for the rest of tax season. So then I started working um, part time and then that quickly grew into a full-time job and it went from 40 units to 80 units to over a hundred units that I was managing for this investor. But um, I think that I easily could have just said no to that opportunity because at the time, you know, we had everything in place for me to stay, be a stay at home mom. But I just, I have the, I, I have that mindset where I want to contribute and I want to grow and I want to, you know, make myself, successful and there are a ton of successful people that are stay-at-home moms I am having really struggling with homeschooling right now mm -hmm. I will admit that so there are some things I know that I can't be successful at and that is a stay-at-home mom full-time but um yeah I easily could have just said I you know I'm I'm gonna stay home and take this path that's already been laid out and planned for me everything was in place but Instead, I, I took that opportunity and it got me here today. Are you someone who is looking to seriously elevate your life this year? I mean, now, this year, 2020, because I want to let you know that I am currently opening up a few coaching spots for people like you who want to close the gap from where you are to where you want to be. And I want to invite you to visit coachwithtyler.com. Again, that's coachwithtyler.com. I have to tell you, this is not for everyone. This is only for those who are defiantly committed, those who are decisive, those who are coachable, those who are resourceful. They're willing to do whatever it takes. They're willing to sacrifice time, energy, and invest resources into themselves to get to where they want to be, to live life at the highest level, and to elevate to a life without limits, exactly what we talked about on this show. If that is you, I invite you to visit coachwithtyler.com. Again, that's coachwithtyler.com. So let's talk a little bit about, you know, we're in a fork in the road. Everybody's in a fork in the road right now. There's a lot of change happening. Uh, you know, who knows? Our entire society may be changing. You know, our financial system may be changing. Obviously, strategies when it comes to real estate investing may be changing. So I'd be curious to know what both of you think in terms of perhaps newer real estate investors or people who are learning or have learned so much about real estate, perhaps over the last few years. And now they're like, wow, the stock market is a disaster that I thought it was. And now I know for sure it is. And so now I'm even more interested in real estate. So I'd be curious to know what, what should real estate investors be doing? How should they be best utilizing their opportunity, their time in quarantine, or just this transition, this changing environment that we're experiencing? We've talked yeah, a little bit about this and um, both of us, I think you agree, Felipe, that right now our biggest recommendation and we think the safest bet right now is to house hack. Yep. Yep. Definitely agreed. House hacking yeah. is, um, it, I think it's really powerful 
because it allows you to take on four quote unquote business partners in a four bedroom home or, or three, you and three other business partners who are responsible for a mortgage and you are going to cash flow, right? I did the numbers on my units. My, my, my tenants pay $7 a day for a room. That's insane to me. You get, you get light, water, and internet. I had a tenant today text me and say, hey, Felipe, um, there's going to be two of us in the room now. You know, what's the, what's the, what, does the rent go up? And I was like, yeah, it's going to be an extra 50 bucks. Don't worry about it. Like we're in a situation right now. I get it. I'm just going to charge you an extra 50 bucks a month. And he was like, man, I think that's too high. I think we might move out. And I said, okay. He texted me like 30 minutes later and was like, no, we're staying. And I sent them the <laughs> no. Well, okay. I'm not gonna lie. I didn't send him the numbers, but I wrote them out. And I was like, dude, you're paying like seven bucks a, a, a day for this room. Like relax, bro. Like you're in a good spot. And I think he realized that. But to answer your question, me and Ashley did agree. We think house hacking right now is the best uh, for real estate. I wouldn't be flipping right now. I wouldn't be doing, you know, some of these other deals. Um, but there is still nuggets out there, man. Like, like, like your listeners, if they're listening, listen to this next part. This was gold. And I heard this from a mentor earlier. He said, Felipe, be looking for hard money lenders and buying the houses that they have. And I was like, wait, hard money lenders? Explain. And he was like, man, they're going to be or closing on houses that flippers couldn't get off their books. And I was like, oh, that makes sense. Like hard money lenders are going to be, you know, calling people's loans or having to take the asset back. And they've already done all the research. They've done everything for you. It's basically like another turnkey model. So I'm starting to look at, at, at some hard money lenders in, in, in here in Nashville to see, you know, all right, hey guys, I'm an investor, you know, just tell me what you have back on your books in the next 30, 60 days. Um, so not, I don't want to say take advantage of people because that's not what I'm saying, but take advantage of the situation as best as you can because it can swallow you up or you can take advantage of it. And, and, and that's what's going to make you a successful real estate investor. Well said. Yeah, I just think it, it requires so much thought, you know, patience, but then also action because I think a lot of people are like, oh, you know what? Let's just hunker down and see what happens. But it's, you know, let's assess the environment and let's make thoughtful decisions, you know, you can't just be idle because there's opportunities. Also, of course, you, you don't want to overdo it because I heard somebody who was way smarter than me this past weekend. He said, don't catch a falling knife. And you know, you just never, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yep. That's what right. you never know how deep this is going to get. I mean, obviously, yeah. you know, so I don't know. What do, what do you think, Ashley? Well, I think that if you are just starting right now, use this time to do your research, listen to podcasts, read books, practice, practice, practice analyzing deals. But if you've already done all that analyzing and you're ready to jump in a deal, I wouldn't say stop, hold off. I would say maybe, you know, have higher expectations of what your cash flow should be and look for deals, look for current investors who are scared and just want to dump stuff and you know maybe they're over leveraged and just want to get out of it um because i think those deals will be coming up and we actually had someone on our podcast who uh i think it was listed at forty five thousand, and they actually got the property for twenty thousand. and Crazy. um yeah wow. it was insane they just i did they close on that one or they're closing this week on it? Maybe I think they were but, closing. Um, weren't they closing that same day? Was that, was that the job? Oh yeah, it was closing? the same day. Yeah, yeah. So closing last the day week after they closed the on it. The, yep. So he renegotiated after this whole thing hit? Oh, yeah. wow. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Wow. There's nothing wrong with asking, man. I've been told no all my life. Um, you know, it's, there's nothing wrong with just asking like, hey, does this work? No. Okay. And that's fine. Like, it's okay. But why not ask and find out, you know? Um, yep. during the, during this time, I'm telling some of my mentees, like, look, gentlemen and ladies, you know, the same hot water boils, right. And it's going to either soften a potato or it's going to harden an egg. What are hmm. you, you know, are you going to come out of this stronger or softer than before? Because it, the same water does things, you know, two different things to do two different, you know, a, a, a potato and an egg. So you have to be that egg. You got to come out of this harder. You got to come out of this more educated. You have to, you have to. If not, you're going to get swallowed up. Yeah. Look at and you uh, with these analogies. That was good. <laughs> well, I, like really that good. Oh, good. I like that. <laughs> I like that a lot. So how do we get out of this stronger? You know, because obviously it's about educating yourself. It's about communicating. I feel like having conversations with others, whether it's your tenants, whether it's your, your partners, your, your bankers, whoever, your property managers, you know, because one of the big things that I'm seeing, you know, I'm a multifamily real estate investor and I'm like, all right, are the tenants going to be paying rent? That's the biggest question. I mean, we're still mm -hmm. early in April. We don't know. I mean, 
looks like you guys may have a little bit of insight there. Are your, are your tenants paying rent or what are you seeing? So I've checked and about a third of mine have paid rent so far. Um, I haven't had anyone reach out to my property management company that I know of yet saying they're not going to be paying. Um, I did offer, if anyone asks about a discount, I am offering $100 off the rent for the next three months because we have a, in New York State, we have a 90-day hold on evictions right now. Yeah. Um, but I, I think that um, we are, I think that I will, just the, the class of tenant I have, that there will be some people who are unable to pay. Uh, so I did um, fill out my... Uh, SBA <laughs> loan money today or yep. yesterday to just to have that just in case, but we'll see. I do think it's really important though for investors or people to looking to get into investing to make sure if something like this were to happen again, or even now if it lasts a long time, to have your personal finances in order. I think that's one reason I am not too worried and I feel secure because my husband and I have you know, found Dave Ramsey three years ago and, you know, got everything in order. And it's just, it's a huge weight off our shoulders that we're financially secure so that our businesses hopefully will also be financially secure or we can at least supplement, you know, my husband's farm income can supplement our rental properties if necessary. So I think that is a, a huge thing that people should be focusing on if they haven't already is their personal finances. Yeah, I just think this whole situation really has revealed who's been responsible and who's been irresponsible and who's considered the fact that rainy days are possible. Um, mm -hmm. So I think it's always, you know, important to realize that this is such a long term game. You know, if you're going to invest in real estate, it's not a get rich quick scheme. And, right. and when things are good, you've got to consider tomorrow may not be that way. And so what can I do? You know, can I reduce my leverage? Can I, you know, increase my cash reserves or whatever it may be? Um, make those capital improvements so that, you know, if the roof is leaking and there's also a quarantine at the same time and you have right. no <laughs> reserves, I mean, these are important things to consider. So I really appreciate you all talking about that. And I want to talk more about the people behind, you know, running these portfolios. You know, one of the things that I think is so important is growing as an individual on a consistent basis, constant and never ending improvement, learning, you know, growing your network, growing your understanding, you know, understanding more about your own psychology, under, understanding more about other psychology so that you can, you know, effectively leverage a team so you can negotiate great deals. So I'd love to know, you know, how are you guys investing in yourselves, not only just through the quarantine and through the situation, but just, you know, maybe over the past, you know, few months, uh, what, what are you guys doing to invest in yourselves right now? Yeah, so I'm uh, rereading my favorite books. I'm not rereading my whole library. I'm rereading some of my favorite books just to kind of like keep that flair going, kind of adding, you know, a little bit more air to the, to the fire, if you will, making sure, you know, fanning the flame, keeping it burning, keeping that passion because sometimes in real estate, we have to be our own cheerleaders. It's really hard to find like friends that are doing the same thing you're doing. I mean, I found Ashley and she's a buffalo, right? Like, I mean, that, that like, it's really hard to find your tribe, if you will. So yeah, I agree with that. Oh, yeah, I have a mastermind. <laughs> so I, I depend a lot on my mastermind. Um, I talk to Ashley a lot more than she probably likes. Um, I bounce <laughs> a lot of ideas off of her. Um, and, and, and then, you know, I'm rereading my books that I really like, like Life and Air. Um, I'm not going all the way back to Rich Dad, Poor Dad, but I probably, it probably wouldn't be a bad idea. But like, I'm reading Life and Air, Tax-Free Wealth, um, uh, the Nike book is the one I'm going to start. Oh, but Shoe it's called the Nike book. Yes. Shoe dog. Shoe dog. Yep. yep. I'm going to go back to that one. Um, you know, podcast, definitely kind of going back to your first love, if that makes sense. Right. Not to yeah. get all Christian on people, but really just going back to your first love to really just, uh, like what drew that flame in you and then finding that passion again. Uh, Ashley came and spoke to my mastermind the other day and she said something I love. She said, getting back to, or we talked about getting back to the basics, like cash reserve, the, the numbers have to work, not trying to fluff it. Don't get emotional. Um, you know, practice, 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 right? Uh, analyze deals that you may or may not purchase, knowing your market, just back to the basics, man. Right now, I think is, is really important to do that. And that's what I'm doing. Um, aside from that, I'm securing, making sure my, my, all my debt is long-term, 30 years, you know, um, speaking to my bank about options. If my tenants do have a struggle, I want to make sure that I have options for them. If something that does come about, I don't want to answer somebody from the hip. Like, Hey, Felipe, I can't pay rent. Well, you got to, because like, like, no, I got to have an option already. Cause I know those questions are coming. So preparing myself for that. 
Um, and then aside from real estate and businessman, just loving on my kid and my family and my wife being as intentional as I can right now, because I have the, not that I don't have the time because you can, you, you have control of your time, but I have more time to give to them now. So I'm being real intentional about playing with my kid, like more than he probably wants, right? Everyone's tired <laughs> of me, Ashley, my wife, everyone's tired <laughs> of me. Like, I'm just being super intentional with my time, trying to like love on my kid, love on my wife as much as possible. And just being a lot more intentional about that because you don't have an excuse right now. So. I love it. I love it. And, uh, you know, this whole thing reminds me, you were talking about books that you'd read before, uh, you know, a long time ago, perhaps even one book that this whole situation reminds me of is who moved my cheese. I don't know if you guys have read that book. Uh, mm -hmm. it's a super simple book. It's literally about these like mice. They're in a maze and they're like getting fat and happy. They're eating this cheese. And then one day they show up and there's no cheese left. They're like, what's going on? So I think there's like three of them. And one of them is like, well, I'll just stay here. It'll, it'll show up at some point, you know? And then the other one is like, you know what? I'm going to go and look for it. I'm going to go find it. And he goes across the other maze and he finds where the other cheese is. And he eats that cheese. He wakes up the next morning. It's no longer there. So he's got to go throughout the maze and find, you know, I'm probably butchering the story, but that's the concept. <laughs> right. And it just reminds, it's like, you have to be adaptive, right? You have to be ready for change and find something new. But uh, anyway, that was a super simple book. I recommend it. Uh, if you guys haven't read it, it's a, it's a fun, easy read, but yeah. what about you, Ashley? What are you, what are you doing to invest in yourself right now? Well, my time hasn't really changed that much because I've been rehabbing a property. So I've still been doing that, but, um, I have spent uh, more time with my family a little bit and my husband and I have spent a lot of time defining what our goals are uh, together. So I've found that like, we're not, we can't go out to eat on a date, you know, so everything's been at home every night. Um, a lot of times I would work late and I'm not doing that anymore. So we've had a lot of time to set our goals and talk about what we want to do with the farm, what we want to do with the rental property. So I've really enjoyed that time um, getting to know all that. Yeah. Other than that, Hello. my schedule really hasn't like changed that much. Ashley's out there still <laughs> grinding and rocking and rolling. She's out there flipping <laughs> yeah. properties and being super productive. If I anything, I have like more time to rehab, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> but I, one thing I am, and I was actually very lucky because I managed the properties for this other investor. And then I managed my own in February 1st, I hired a professional property management company to take over my properties and those properties. So I'm still working for the investor. I like oversee the property management company, you know, collect payment from them, you know, still pay the bills and everything like that. But it's really reduced a lot of my work and it's been, it was amazing having them cover all of everything that's going on right now. You know, every day they've sent out emails, like updating the residents on what, you know, what they can expect. And it's been really great to have them um, in place and it's taken a ton off my shoulders. So I'm very thankful that they were hired February 1st to, oh, wow. to take on that responsibility. Um, but I'm also time. putting systems in place. So since the property management company took over, a lot of my systems are no longer useful because it included, you know, everything from leasing unit to rent payment. Um, for the money management. And now I'll be, you know, getting a lump sum from them on the 15th and, you know, taking their, the owner's report they give me, putting it into my bookkeeping. So I'm working and I'm changing software. I had property management software. Now I'm going back to QuickBooks. So switching that all over. So I'll be working on systems. And I think that's a, I saw on Instagram today too, um, a house builder who can't build right now. They're at a, a place where it's shelter in place. So she's taking the time to reorganize her office and, you know, put systems in place for all of her bookkeeping for their different businesses. So I think that's a great idea. If anyone just is sick of sitting still reading or listening to podcasts and go organize your office and go do some action. Put, yeah. Put some uh, systems in place for your filing bookkeeping, maybe create a paperless office, scan everything in. That's one thing that's worked really well for me is having everything available on OneDrive and Google Drive. That's awesome. One of the things I really like about you guys is that you speak to folks who are entering into real estate. And, you know, a lot of times you hear that people are like, well, you know, you want to scale as much as possible. You want to get in and you want to build this huge team. You want to delegate and you want to, you know, you want to become 
the next Trump, the next Sam Zell, whatever. So I'd love to know from both of you guys, I mean, what do you, what's your opinion of folks who are looking to do this as a side hustle or, you know, is that something that you would recommend uh, and or, I mean, should they have these huge aspirations towards building just unlimited cash flow or what's your opinion? Yeah, um, I would, I would say, I mean, before you even get started, identify your goal and work backwards from that. My goal when I first started, or my goal was just money. I was like, oh, I'm just going to shoot for money. I'm going to buy six unit apartment complexes and I'm just going to crush it. And, and quickly found out that that wasn't what I wanted to do. Um, so I would say identify your goal and then, you know, work it backwards and use real estate with money as the avenue to reach that goal. So now my, my goal is, um, you know, cash flow to buy back my time with my family. And it's just that simple. I, if a deal, if I have two deals in front of me and one of those deals gives more money, but less time then I buy the deal that does more time, but less money. And I'm okay with that. Right? So if you, once you identify your goal and work towards that using real estate as an avenue to do it, um, I think you're going to be more successful. So identifying your goal, um, learning your market, make sure that you're analyzing deals in your market to make sure that you know, when a property comes available, you can offer on it quick. You can make moves. Real estate moves really quickly grows slowly, but moves very quickly. Um, people buy and sell all the time. So make sure that you know your market. Um, like Ashley was saying, build systems in place to where, uh, you know, get your team together. Uh, you know, your realtor, your lender, get, make sure you have all that ready to rock and roll when you're going to be investing. Um, and then just jump in, man, just get that first rental property. It's going to change your life. Just get that first one. That first one's not going to make you a millionaire. That first one's not going to like retire you from your job that first one is going to teach you more lessons than it does anything yeah. and if but the key there is learn the lessons and not let it just teach you like i hear that all the time People are like oh it's going to teach mm. you a lesson and i'm like i don't want none to teach me a lesson i remember when my mom said <laughs> teach you a lesson well i knew it was coming after that no you got to <laughs> learn from those lessons if you don't learn from them then then it was a wasted opportunity so learn from the lessons that that first property is going to give you um, and then just keep going, you know, just keep going, just keep going, do another one, do another one, just keep it, keep, keep that momentum going. Um, and, and you're going to be successful. Yeah, yeah. I want to piggyback off what Felipe said about identify your goal and then work backwards. And I think it's important to know what you have and what, you know, you bring to the table. What do you already have to start investing in real estate? Is it money? Is it time? Is it, you know, experience? Um, knowledge. But I think if I identify that what you have to build your goal and create that outcome, but also what do you need? What are you lacking? And then identify that and then figure out a way to get what you need, whether it's money, maybe you can partner with someone. That's how I got started was with a partner. He had the money and I had the experience from managing those properties. But I, I think what Felipe said is, you know, know what your goal is. What do you want the outcome to be? Look at, you know, five years, 10 years, where do you see yourself? And then work backwards and figure out how to get there. And I think there's so many people who have already done, you know, what your goal is that you don't even have to re like, don't reinvent the wheel, you know, go on the bigger pockets forums or, you know, look on Instagram and you can, people clear up on social media, people shout from the rooftops how they're doing things. Go and look how they're doing it and see if any of those, you know, processes, systems they're using will work for you to help you get started and to, to grow. Yeah. And what you talked about earlier was that finding a tribe is challenging. And I know it is, it is, can, it can be hard to surround yourself with like-minded individuals. However, with the beautiful thing that we have as the internet, and obviously you guys mm -hmm. have a great tool in bigger pockets and there's so many other resources to go out and find people that you can learn from and build a relationship with them. Most people want to share with you, you know, and if they don't, then go right. find the next person. Right. So <laughs> I want to know, I want to dive in a little bit deeper. Felipe talked about learning the lessons rather than just being taught, you know, being taught. I, I really like that. You know, I, I can totally relate the first deal I ever did. I was like, Oh my gosh, I learned some lessons, you know, and they still stick with me deeply to this day. So maybe we'll talk a little bit about failure. I mean, did you guys experience uh, some failure in the beginning that maybe caused you to say, maybe this isn't for me, or I don't know. I, I had that inner talk at some point, but 
curious to know. No, I've been, are. I've been successful from the beginning. I've never messed up. I'm perfect <laughs> what I do. All right, we're done. We're out. All right, Good. cool. Thanks. <laughs> Drop the no, mic. dude, are you kidding me? I, Jesus, man. I mess up every day. Every I mess up today. Yeah. I forgot my ratchet straps when I was delivering a, a refrigerator. <laughs> dude, no, you're going to mess up every, but that's the difference between I'm going to teach you a lesson and you're going to learn this lesson, right? learning a lesson you're going to keep it forever and i think in real estate that's really important because when you first start out everything you do you're going to mess up on and and just take it on the chin bro like you're going to be fine just keep going and learn from it um it's funny because i don't ever take anyone to my first property like no <laughs> one ever sees my first property i always take them to the one i'm working on now or my <laughs> latest one because my first one is a chop shop dude it looks <laughs> terrible i can go back and fix it but the tenants are happy they don't care it's fine but i mean i got better i can literally see my portfolio and it got better every single time and it used to take me six months to do what i now do in 30 45 days right like your systems get better my i mean i can i can pop four rooms two bathrooms and a kitchen in 35 40 days that used to take me half a year to do but because i've i've grown and i've learned and and I know who to put back to back. And I know it used to be like, oh, crap, I need a dumpster. Okay, let me order a dumpster. Three or four days. Ugh, okay, now I got to wait three or four days. Now it's like, I know I'm going to need a dumpster. I know when the drywall is going in. I know when this is going to happen. So you start like learning those processes. And, and that's why it used to take me so long. And now I'm back to back to back to back to back because I've learned those lessons. I wasn't just, you know, someone wasn't just telling me this is how it's going to happen. You know, I got in the mud, got dirty. Um, let me give you a perfect example. My stepdad, um, w when I used to work with him um, back through college, I used to lay flooring. This dude would wear a $50 polo and some $100 like Levi's to go lay flooring. And I was so confused how he came and went or went and came back from work so clean. And I would go to work and I'd come back looking a hot mess, <laughs> dust everywhere, just looking crazy. And he would come back like if he went to the office and he just laid a whole house of wood floor, carpet and tile. And I'm like, what? And, 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 and that's a metaphor for now my real estate. I can do that in real estate. I can go in with a nice shirt and come out with a nice shirt. When I started, I went in with a nice shirt. I came out with half a shirt, right? So yeah. you, you get to wear the clean shirt going in and out once you start realizing and you're learning those, those processes. Because you don't know what you don't know in the beginning. And until exactly. you take action, until you take those bumps on the chin or whatever it may be, then you sort of say, all right, well, I'm not going to do that again, right? I'm do that again. So yep. you learned it from taking action. Exactly. Absolutely. I just want to add that I'm not as great as Felipe because today I stopped at um, one of my rehabs before where someone was painting and I spilled paint all over my pant leg and I had to go <laughs> home and change it for my doctor's appointment. <laughs> <laughs> I still can't walk and do projects with sleep gloves on. But see, it's like Ashley said though, take your advice, Ashley. You know what you're good at and do that. See, Ashley right now is learning the rehab stuff. Like her Instagram is blowing up with that stuff. But like, she knows all this stuff that stresses me out, like Excel sheets and QuickBooks and like yeah. all that stuff. This whole office living thing is not for me. I got a nice shirt on right now because I was doing this, but dude, I like being out there cutting grass. I probably still got some grass in my hair where I was cutting a minute ago. Yeah. Like I like being out there, right? My hands are calloused up. You can't fake that. I, I mean, I like being out there grinding and, and I find, uh, you know, I add va that value to a partner, right? If, 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 if I find a partner that's like, hey, Felipe, I'm good at, you know, what Ashley does, everything, QuickBooks, bookkeeping, paying bills, all this stuff. I'm like, great. I can add so much value to the property and I'm going to be on site and I know how to work with contractors, but I'm going to let you do what you're good at. Yeah, my mentor recently talked to me about, you know, putting systems in place and creating a manual, how I run my business so that someone could easily do everything I'm doing. And at first when he started talking, I just, I wasn't really listening. I lost focus and I was like, yeah, whatever. Like I like, like Felipe said, I, I can do bookkeeping, but I don't love it, but I love going into a rehab and putting in brand new flooring and learning how to, you know, change a faucet. And I, I wasn't listening to what he was saying. And then it finally clicked with me that if I put all these systems in place and someone else was able to do those jobs, I am able to pick and choose every single job I do. And it made me realize, like, yes, I want to keep doing these rehabs, 
But if I learn how to, you know, systemize different things and I can, you know, pick and choose here, I'm going to hire this person to do this. I have, you know, this employee to do this. Oh, but you know what, this day I'm going to do this job and flip it around. And it was just very eye opening <laughs> to me that even though that's the job I love to do, it will eventually wear you down and you'll want to do something else. Cause I, Felipe, I bet if you were still in there doing every single one of your rehabs, remodeling that putting in a bathroom you would be sick of it by now yeah i agree 100 percent. what what i'm i'm not in there doing that anymore now i'm handling right, the exactly. contractors yeah. but because but you I go love in yep. exactly i like going in yep. talking to the contractors and i'm yeah. like hey that looks great or no that doesn't look so good uh, right so now i'm at a place where i pick and choose what i want to do i love jumping mm -hmm. on my zero turn right. and cutting all my lawns do i have to do that no i i know how to do all the drywall stuff but now i have guys that do that and i can look at it and say good job or no, that needs to get remudded or that tape is wrong or whatever, right? So it's kind of like what right. Ashley's yeah. going to do, right? She's going to create systems for someone else to take over. And then she's going to go pick and choose what she wants to do. But being able to continue to look at what someone else is doing for her. And mm -hmm. that's where, um, you know, I, I think you're picking and choosing your time wisely, right? Like what you yeah. want to do. If Ashley wants to change toilets, go at it, girl. Do what you got to do. <laughs> but now she has the option. Now she doesn't have to go do that. Now she's like, I'm going to go learn how to do this. Cool. Right. Yeah. And I, I've taken on a partner to help me, you know, to teach me all these things. So that's, if anyone is looking for a partner, that's a great asset to have is someone who knows the opposite of you. He doesn't know, you know, bookkeeping or doesn't like to do any of that stuff. So he teaches me rehab and I take care of the bookkeeping, the paperwork, you know, all the stuff behind the scenes. But, um, I really do need to spend more time during this quarantine putting systems in place because my mentor even said, you know, look at when you go look at a, a property. Okay, think about how much time that takes touring the property. He said, you know, go go to the property, take a video, take a hundred pictures. But when you start touring properties over the next six months, do it the same exact way every single time and document what you're doing. And then you'll have a manual in place that someone else can go do the showings for you. You know, they'll write notes, then, you know, everything you want to know about that property will, there will be a picture of it and a note taken. And he said, then you can just, you can start outsourcing that if you want, you don't have to, but at least the option is there. Yeah. And you know how it's done because you've done right. it yourself. Just yeah. kind of like what Felipe is saying is you really need to know how it's done so you can inspect what you expect to be able to say, mm -hmm. all right, this is being done the way I expect it to be done. And now I can grow a little bit more. And that's why I, I see a ton of value in growing a little bit slow in the beginning. And while you're kind of bumping your, your head and you're, you're, mm -hmm. you're stubbing your toe and you're building your systems and you're balancing yourself out with someone who has, you know, expertise or perhaps, you know, a different personality that you do. And you know, one thing that just like came to my mind as we were talking about this was that I feel like there's never been a better time to find a partner than in this environment. Think about how many people's lives have just been uprooted. I mean, mm -hmm. 10 million unemployment claims over the past like 10 days. It's crazy. Right. So just think about how many people are going to have to pivot. Who's going to be the most resourceful? Who's going to be the most committed towards living the life of their dreams? Just go out and find them. All you got to do is start having these conversations, putting your message out there. You may not be able to be within six feet of them, but my goodness, we've <laughs> never had more technology than we do now. I mean, do you guys see that? I feel like there's never been a better opportunity than now. To well, I think somebody. that goes with Felipe's a post too about, you know, if there's someone that really wants to change their life so they're not put into a situation like this again, or they're better prepared, they'll take this time to maybe get into real estate investing. Like for me, a big thing is having multiple streams of income. So like right now we're very fortunate to have our dairy farm because that really hasn't been affected at all. We're quarantined here, so we're here to work and, you know, we milk is still being produced and lots of people are buying milk off the shelves. But I, I want to, um, within hopefully in the next couple of months, I'll be opening a liquor store. That would be another, uh, source of revenue, you know, rental properties. Um, <laughs> sorry. I, I don't am know. A know. That's so funny. I am Essential a business. <laughs> exactly. And I'm so mad that Ashley, we didn't get our liquor, liquor license stuff. yet that we could be open right now. <laughs> I love that. That is Every awesome. Time I have my insurance that, agent it. license too to get com uh, commissions from insurance. Uh, but so I think there's the multiple streams of income. 
So if there's people looking right now is if something like this happened again, how, how could I still have income coming in and make, you know, maybe a lot of investors don't know if tenants are going to pay rent right now. So that still is scary. And I never thought something like this would really happen. I thought buy and hold was very safe, secure. Um, but this is just show, showing you that it's nothing really yeah. is 100%. <laughs> I think that we'll be in good shape in the long run, but certainly in the short run, if you were irresponsible, right. you're going to have some major challenges. So you have yeah. to be able to weather a storm. Um, but yeah, I mean, who would have ever experienced or expected this type of experience? And so, right. you know, how are you preparing yourself for the uncertain and creating, you know, additional streams of revenue or additional income sources? I just think opening your mind to the possibilities rather than just leaving the traditional life that we, I don't know about you guys, but I was taught the traditional way. It's like, go to, go to school, get good grades, get a good job. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to be set. You may, you may even get a gold watch at the end of the day. And yeah. you know, we know for sure now that is not the truth. So what can we do to create more? And it's through real estate. It's through developing yourself as a person. It's through mm -hmm. connecting with other people like you guys. And so I just really appreciate you guys. I've had so much fun today in this conversation and, before we get out of here, I just want to transition to our rapid fire section. Uh, we call it the rare air questionnaire and it's all about elevating to a life without limits. It's pushing the limits. You know, what someone told us was impossible yesterday. We're proving is possible today. And so uh, we talked a little bit about books earlier. Uh, Felipe told us a little bit about some nostalgic books that he's been diving back into. So I'd love to know, you know, if you guys were to point to two or three of the most impactful books that you've ever read, I'd love to know what those are. Sure. Uh, for me, it's definitely going to be um, the book of Proverbs in the Bible. I used to read that all the time when I was younger. Um, and again, not to get all Jesus-y on people, but I would always be like, okay, I, people who are like Christians and not Christians know about King Solomon, smartest, richest dude, whatever. And it's like, okay, I want to read, um, you know, the uh, Proverbs because there's so much wisdom in that book. There's so much things that you can apply to, 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 to real estate, to money, to everything, right? It's like, it talks about, you know, sowing seeds and having seeds in reserves for later. And it talks about, mm. you know, spending your money wisely and respecting your parents, all things that are going to help you in life, but in real estate and business as well. Um, the Richest Man in Babylon, another one, man, such a boring book, but what a good book. I made my <laughs> wife listen to that on the way back from Daytona once back to Nashville. Oh, we almost got a divorce by like that. <laughs> such a boring book, but man, it's so good. There's so much wisdom in that book. And then life and air. Ultimately, life and air for me gave me that purpose. It gave me that like, why am I investing in real estate? I ended up selling my six unit apartment complex for a property that gives me about half the cash flow, but doesn't, it takes up maybe six, seven hours of my, of my month, picking up rent, cutting the grass and, but things that I like to do, not things that I have to, right? Um, it was great. So I think life and air gave me that, 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 that like reason of why I'm investing in real estate. So those three books to me, gold love them that's awesome what about you Ashley? i really i really love personal finance books uh those are really my favorite but i would have to pick the index card um i can't tell you authors of any books i just like i can't tell you artists of any songs but um the index card i really enjoy um and the automatic millionaire I think are two really oh, great good... uh, personal finance books. And then right now um, I'm going through the daily stoic where um, I don't know if you guys have heard of that, but it's just mm -hmm. like a little philosophy passage each day. And then the author kind of interprets it for you and summarizes it. And there's one for every day for a full year. So it, I went to Hawaii in January with my husband and we actually started the book then. And it's been really fun, a little, ritual we've been doing together where we'll we'll read it out loud and then we'll both take the time to like write how it means to what it means to us or how it relates to us and it's been kind of a, a fun thing to do. That's really cool. I love just learning about stoicism because in times of turbulence or in times of great joy, you can remain in the middle and you can realize that you know everything is impermanent, right? And how do you react? And um, there's just so much wisdom there and uh, really appreciate I got the double list uh today in today's uh, episode so appreciate the uh, the great books there we'll definitely put links in the show notes for everything maybe even we'll put a link to proverbs in there uh if we can find one so uh love that talk to me about what's the biggest way that you elevate your life on a daily basis yeah um so one of the one of the biggest things that i like to do is so i wake up early um used to be i, I used to wake up early because i had to 
But now for me personally, waking up early has really helped me out. Going to sleep early has really helped. I used to think that was crap when people were like, oh, wake up early. Like you're going to be more successful or whatever. And I'm like, why? Why don't I just go to sleep late? It sounds like the same 24 <laughs> hours. But waking up early just does something to you. By the time it's 9 p.m. or 9 a.m. when everyone else is waking up, I've already had three hours. So I'm, I'm ahead of people by three hours typically um, every day. And then from there, mentors. Mentors have been one of the biggest things in my life that has really helped me, you know, get to that next level because there's something about accepting that there's that there's people that are doing it bigger, better and better than you. And, and finding a mentor that's doing that is is like, OK, I want to get to this level. This person is there. I got to figure out a way to get in touch with that person, whatever that looks like. Um, and I mean, that's been one of the biggest things, humbling yourself to them, learning from them. Um, yeah, I think mentors are great asset to elevating yourself to making yourself better i'm never going to meet michael jordan but if i want to be a good basketball player probably somebody that i'm going to reach out to right (laughs) reading his books whatever the case may be so mentors in your life definitely are huge for sure yeah those are great things that felipe mentioned um i have a mentor too and he actually started me on something that's new to me uh, but i think it's definitely helping elevate my life uh, daily is i am statements So I had talked to him about how on our podcast, I feel like it takes me a little bit to get warmed up and get into the interview. And so I started doing I am statements in the morning. And then before any interview or, you know, I spoke on Felipe's mastermind and it has been uh, life changing already and just doing it for a week. Um, So I I recommend that to to anyone is creating those uh, I am statements for yourself and just repeating them over and over or reading them, whatever works for you. So no listener left behind. I just want to make sure that everyone understands. And what you mean by an I am statement is really just creating your identity and being conscious of who you're becoming and who you want to be and then stepping into that and acting as that individual. Am I, am I saying that correctly? Yeah. So for, for example, like um, one of mine I said the other day is, I am a better podcast host than Felipe. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Y'all, look, Ashley knows she's a really good podcaster. She knows no, she's no, better no, than no, me and she awesome. grinds no. me. Out. She beats me. She always dogs me. Guys, okay, so my last podcast, I had a parrot in the background and I'm never going to hear the end of it. I couldn't get the parrot to shut up. And Ashley has made memes about it. She's going to post them on Instagram. <laughs> Uh, we give each other a bunch of hell man i love it yeah yeah you guys are awesome uh talk to me about what's the biggest way that you elevate others on a daily basis oh that's awesome um for me i love elevating my my mentees man i pour into them way more than i know anybody else that does man i call them i text them i annoy them i'm in people's faces um you know i'm i'm all about uplifting um not just I mean, a lot of my mentees are Latino because I feel like a lot of the times they get left behind. But I'm, I, I, but anybody who's in my mastermind, I'm like calling, texting. I'm trying to figure out what's the best way to add value. I listen to what people. So one of my mentors told me this thing, and I think it's really important. He said, Felipe, make sure that you're listening to people to understand, not to reply. And that has been the biggest game changer when loving on people. Like getting someone's respect is cool, but when you get someone's love and when you love on somebody because you're listening to them and you're wanting to understand where they're coming from, not just waiting for your turn to reply, then you've missed 80% of the conversation and what they're saying, right? Um, So I I think for me, it's when someone talks, I'm listening to understand, not just listening to reply. And that's made a huge difference in anybody and everyone that I talk to. I mean, I really try to listen to understand what they're saying. That's been a growth process for me for the podcast because it's like, all right, I want to facilitate the discussion. I want to make sure that I'm bringing us to the right place. But listening and having a true conversation has been something that's really, you know, improved the quality of my relationships, I feel like, because being present with you guys, you know, passes over there. So I, that's a huge lesson. I totally agree with you on that. I love yeah. That. Instead of like trying to think of what the next question is you're going to ask, yeah. it, it's yeah. hard to do both. <laughs> Absolutely. Cause I don't want it to just be like, all right, we're just friends talking on a conversation. I want it to yeah. serve someone else. But at the same time, the only way to do that is to listen. And just, that's just yeah. my microcosm of your concept that you're speaking of there, but it's all about other people. I mean, how can you give to someone else and you can't give to someone else if you can't listen to them and truly understand where they're coming from. So I love that. Exactly. What would you say, Ashley, what's the biggest way that you elevate others on a daily basis? 
Well, right now I'm working on um, a little community, a little village near us. Um, we live like in a rural area, but the school district that um, my son is in, um, that town I bought uh, five properties in there. And I mean, they've been run down, um, you're not the best inherited tenants uh, for the community. So I've been slowly working on um, making hopefully the community better by um, making these units nicer, just, you know, more curb appeal, um, getting better uh, tenants in there, you know, not that aren't using drugs, you know, stuff like that. Um, so right now that's been my focus and that's where I'm going to open a liquor store. And yes, some may say that a liquor <laughs> store is not exactly, <laughs> you know, great I would for say that's community. just fine. <laughs> but I, uh, you know, we're going to get, give job growth um, hopefully to the community. And um, we've been uh, trying to use a lot of, um, so I have a development company that actually, it used to manage all my properties and then it would, uh, it, now it controls all the rehab. So I've been, um, using that money to donate to the the PTA at the school to to help out the school there. So right now that's kind of been my focus is seeing what I can do uh, for this community. And, you know, it's just, it's small things right now, but hopefully over the years, I'll be able to make a bigger and bigger impact. That's awesome. Wow, I'm and, helping a couple of people. Ashley's over there changing communities. So I know. The game up. <laughs> yeah, that was a that was an indirect shot at you. Yeah, I say. see. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> dang, oh my bad. She's like, all right, hold on. So, somebody hold my beer here. Let me, yeah, in. you should have seen me on, yesterday. I had my quarantine <laughs> outfit on when I was coming, like the one building and rehab. I, I was like it. on Main Street and I had, you know, the white painters, whole that. body suit on, goggles, the mask. And I just walking in and out of the building to my car and yeah so was, people couldn't tell you know if i had the coronavirus or you know <laughs> or going to uh to paint that's funny yeah. that's awesome well you guys are so awesome this has been a lot of fun i really really appreciate you all taking time uh today and definitely elevating our listeners and, and giving to our community uh tell the listeners where they can learn more about your podcast and both of you guys individually so I'll let Ashley do the plug. I'll talk about myself here. Uh, maybe beat Ashley a little bit of that. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, you can find me on Instagram, F-E-L-I-P-E-M-E-J-I-A-R-E-I. -E 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 Felipe Mejia, R-E-I. -E That's where I spend most of my time on Instagram. I'm trying to catch up to Ashley's follower numbers. I hit 5,000 today, finally. Yay! Look, Ashley's cracking up. <laughs> next goal is 10,000. Um, That's where you can find me. And then uh, you can also find me at Rat Race 2 fi That's my private mastermind where we, what we do is we try to get people out of the rat race and into financial independent via business, via real estate, via whatever it is. Um, everyone and everyone is supported and loved there. So that's where you can find me, Rat Race 2FI on Instagram and Felipe Mejia, REI on Instagram. Check out Felipe. He's an awesome guy. Yeah, man. And then my Instagram account is at Wealth from Rentals. Um, I don't have a cool mastermind like Felipe. <laughs> so he's See, got me be there you. today. He was There's right. self deprecation. Be me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, we also have a Facebook group uh, called The Real Estate Rookie. If you just search that on Facebook, you'll be able to find it. And then um, our podcast is on every platform. It's called The Real Estate Rookie. Absolutely. And uh, really appreciate you guys spending time and definitely the listeners, you want to, you want to reach out. I mean, you can access both of these awesome individuals through so many different platforms. So go listen to their content, go learn, take the opportunity to make some changes and take this change and make it, you know, the future that you desire rather than something, you know, that just happens. You know, what can you do to create your future through investing in yourself, through investing in your network? through investing in your education, your future, your real estate portfolio. There's so many opportunities now. So I definitely want to encourage you to re-listen to this show and also screenshot the show and tag Felipe, tag Ashley, myself, Elevate Podcast, and share this with a friend because as I always say, the teacher is who learns the most. And if you can teach this to someone else, maybe you're going to understand it better yourself and maybe you're going to be able to put that into better action. And it's all about taking massive action. So until next time, put this into your life put this into your business. And I want to thank you guys again for being here today. Thank yeah. You. Thank fun. you so much for having us. Absolutely. Elevate Nation. We'll see you next time. This episode of Elevate is brought to you by CF Capital, a real estate investment firm formed by myself and my partner, Brian Flaherty, where we invest in multifamily real estate communities across the Southeast United States. 
If you'd like to learn more about our approach, our mission, our acquisition criteria, and how you can learn more about future opportunities, visit cfcapllc.com. Again, that's cfcapllc.com. Thank you for listening to Elevate. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to rate, review, subscribe, and pay it forward by sharing with a friend. Most importantly, take this opportunity to elevate your results by taking immediate action on what you learned. For more, visit tylerchesser.com.